Speaking of George, there's that turtleneck. Check it out. He has spoken. Yes, front page of the Post Wednesday said heads will roll. Bottom seven for nothing. Yanks. Mike Timlin facing Alfonso Soriano. He's American League leading 16th home run of the year. Made it five nothing. Yanks. Top of the ninth, Mariano Rivera in for Mike Messina. Socks down 5-1, bags full for no more Garcia Parra. No more. His only hit of the game was a good one. It brought in two runs. And suddenly, the Red Sox were down just 5-3. to three. No more one for four. He's hitting 306. Three batters later, it's Shea Hillenbrand at the plate. Hillenbrand looking for space opposite way. Finds it. That'll score no more. Your pinch runner, Damian Jackson, goes to third. Big RBI for Hillenbrand. He had two of those. He was two for four. He's hitting 303. Sox within one. George in a tizzy. Next batter, Bill Miller. 2 2 pitch. Just misses outside. Steinbrenner wanted that strike and lets us know it in a way he only can. And then Miller on the ground. Derek Cheater, the throw to first, not in time. Jackson scores. We are tied at five. Steinbrenner, disgusted. Next batter, Trot Nixon. What a play by Todd Zeal to deflect that right to Alfonso Soriano, who was so skilled. Check out the throw home, nailing Hillenbrand. And Steinbrenner, well, he says, they're my boys. I'm proud of you. To the bottom of the ninth. Hideki Matsui. Matsui, who hits more grounders than anybody in the AL, puts that one up in the air. Manny Ramirez shows us why fielding is not his strength. And then his throw, Ramirez rushes his throw for some reason. It's a double and an error on Manny. So Matsui goes to third. If he kept running, he probably would have gone home if he didn't hesitate at second. But he gave Ramirez credit. Next batter, Soriano. Brandon Lyon intentionally walks him. Next batter after that is Jason Giambi. Giambi kills Lyon, so he's intentionally walked. Brady Little out to chat with Lyon. What about Brian Cashman, the Yanks GM? Nervous. Brings up Jorge Posada. 2-2 pitch. Oh, baby. That looked like a strike, but it's called a ball by Joe West. Take another look. Too close to take, especially at Yankee Stadium. The ball. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's Yankee Stadium. Let's flash back to last year, July 21st, 2002. Like Wednesday, the Red Sox with a runner on third, electing to walk the bags full to face. Jorge Posada and Ugi Urbina walks Posada, and the Yankees win 9-8. to eight. Could Posada do it against the Red Sox for a second straight year? How about that for a tease? Back to Wednesday now. Passat in the box, bags full, 3-2 pitch, and Lyon walks in the winning run. Jason Varitek, the Red Sox catcher, can't believe it. He's still disgusted about that 2-2 oh. pitch called a ball. Matsui scores the winning run. Brian Cashman thrilled. Grady Little not thrilled. Joe West leaves the field to a standing ovation by Yankee fans. Well, I guess the Yanks were actually cheering for their, their own their players. Yeah. You know, taking two of three from the Red Sox like the Yanks did, Go back to the diamond. Twins and the ace. Bottom second, down 3 nothing. Two on for Doug Minkiewicz. That would be M-I-E-N-T-K-I-E-W-I-C-Z because, you know, the spelling bee is on Thursday. Oh. Three-run blast, fourth of the season. We're tied at three. He was three for four. Jock Jones deep to left center. Chris Singleton going to try to make the catch, but you hate when you get the butt. Off his glove and over the wall. Home run. Twins lead 4-3. Now Minkiewicz again swinging the bat. And that goes, whoa, look out for the security guard. Now she'll retrieve it. Look, she goes, look, I got that, but um, this part fell off. That's not so good. McKay, Minkiewicz would later single with the brand new bat. Next batter, Dustin Moore. Shot. That'll score Minkiewicz. Sixth of the season, just trotting home. 6 4 twins. Six runs on just six hits. A's put together 13 hits. Couldn't get enough runs, though. Down 6 5. Terrence Long. Minkiewicz got that one. And look at that. Yeah, step on the bag. Double play. Twins hold on. 6 5. Extend their winning streak to four games. Angels Orioles playing ball in Baltimore. Bottom second, Brian Roberts facing Ramon Ortiz with the bases chucked. We'll go back out to Anaheim. May 22nd, top nine. O's down 4-3 with the bases loaded. Roberts facing Troy Percival. And Roberts' first homer of the year was a grand slam. Made a winner out of his team. Sent Percival to the deal with a bad hip. Well, now, I'm not sure lightning will strike twice, but at least it's going to strike in different places. you got to have the money ball. And, of course, the bigger the home run, the louder you have to scream. Roberts now two for two with bases loaded this season. A couple of slams. Melvin Mora going to try and get this one off. Benji Molina, he's got it. Hauls it in. O's win it six to two. A grand time again for Roberts.
Dodgers and Rockies. Hey, Larry Walker, he's from Maple Ridge, B.C. Walker played goalie, you know, for 13 years growing up before turning to baseball. This is what he said about Patrick Waugh's retirement. You hear Patrick and you think of Canada. He's the greatest goalie that there's been, and he's from the same country I'm from. So it's a great honor for me and everybody in Canada to honor Patrick Waugh. To baseball now, the sport he chose to play and get paid for. Walker with a single, his only hit of the game, but he also walked three times. That scored Mark Sweeney. Preston Wilson out at home. Four nothing Rockies. Bottom three seams scored two men on. Sean Chacon. No relation, John. Up the middle, scoring two more runs. Six nothing Colorado. Top of the fifth, Chacon on the mound. Doing what he does best, trying to win ball games and striking out Adrian Beltre. Chacon with seven Ks, asked Jason Romano. Top of the seventh, Chacon again gets Beltre. He pitched two hit ball to Chacon over eight innings. There he is striking out Daryl Ward. Four straight wins for Colorado. Split screen right here. Why? Because the Rockies have tied a team record for most shutouts in one season. Patrick Waugh, 89 career shutouts, including playoff games. Pirates Cubs, Bucks going for a sweep behind the brilliant Jeff D'Amico, and here pitching to Hesop Choi in the second. Abraham Nunez, the one hopper, the throw, and they got it. Until Blue says no. Lloyd McClendon does not like the safe call. He's going to come out and argue a bit. We'll take another look. Choi actually said afterwards, yeah, I'm pretty sure I was out. Ball beat me there, and clearly he did, but Don Deckinger maybe. No, that he's not. I'll let that go. Four batters later. Damian Miller, he's from Scots, and I'm from Scots, and he's from lacrosse, though. Three-run home run to left field. Cubs go up 3-2, his fifth, and now Lloyd wants a little more because you just cost me three runs, mister. Oh, and he gets ejected from the game. Bottom five, D'Amico facing Mark Grizzolani, deep to left field. Rob McCoyak, do we have a Sports Center top 10 nominee? We do. Look at him, up against the Ivy. Makes the catch, probably will have a rash. Top nine, fires down 5-4. Joe Borowski pitching to Nunez. Grizzolani gets the hop, fires. I'm um, called him out there. Cubs win it by count of 5-4. For call leading off against Jeff Austin, who didn't get a batter out in his last start. And while this doesn't start well, for call the first of his two, Braves lead 1-0. He had 7 and 8 on the night. Next batter, Mark DeRosa. And he pops one, so we've got back-to-back -back homers off Austin to start this thing. Braves up 2-0. DeRosa just his second of the season. Next batter, well, here's your real power. Top 10 nominee, Gary Sheffield. Swing! Sheffield! was just smoked. Bravely 3-0. Austin awesome. can't believe it. Sheffield's 13th homer of the season will tell you just how impossible that feat was by the end of this highlight. Next batter, Chipper Jones. We go back to Tuesday night when Chipper won the game in the 10th with a go homer. So it was four straight homers by Braves batters if you're counting them up and that's how we did it. So with the homer streak continuing, yeah, Chipper grounds into a little 5-3. So, you know, a little congratulations goes out to Austin. The first out he recorded in his last 12 batters face and he did another one. He was on a bit of a roll until Javi Lopez came up with a runner on second and he uncorks yet another home run. This one were two. Austin two-thirds of an inning, four hit, five earned runs four homers. The Braves win this thing 15 to 3. Bobby's 13th homer of the season. Mike McFarland talks about Jeff Austin's awfully tough turn of the rotation. Jeff Austin was coming off an outing where he didn't get out of the first inning. Tonight he was trying to get ahead of the batters with his fastball. Had no breaking ball and a minimal changeup against a very good fastball hitting team. He left the ball up out over the plate and you saw the end result. Balls were leaving the yard. All right, here's your trivia question. Which major league team was the last? Lead off a game with three straight homers. Brewers, Padres, Rangers, nobody. We're going to go with B. That's right, 87, the Padres. Marvell Wynn followed by Tony Gwynn, and then it didn't rhyme, John Kruk. That was the last, only other time it's happened, just twice. Unassisted triple plays. In Florida, Montreal attendance, though, 9,169. This is game two after the Marlins took the first one. Ron Calloway singles left. Jose Macias trying to score. Todd Howlsworth cut off man. Mike Lowell gassed. That's Sports Center top 10 nominee. Marlins win at 6 0, sweep the doubleheader, run their win streak to six. Hey, I got a Sports Center top 10 nominee as well. Pedro Astacio is a part of it. For the Phillies up three to one, David Bell going deep, Cliff Floyd. Back to the wall to make the play as he crashes into the wall. I mean, Floyd's banged up so much anyway. Let's flash back. June 24th, 2001, Floyd, a Marlin then. 
going after Bobby Abreu, whose shot did not make the play there, but same great effort. Next day, Marlin fans really thought that Floyd left his mark. That's clever. Back to Wednesday, take another look at the play by Floyd. Knows the wall is there, but stays focused and makes the play. Bottom five now, Phillies up five to one. Jim Tomei facing Astacio. Astacio, a mess. He gave up seven runs in four innings. Tomei, his 11th. Ricky Lede, Jimmy Rollins, Felicita Blanco also went deep. The Phillies crushed the Mets 11 to three. Devil Rays, Ben Grieve, one homer this season with the Devil Rays. But, you know, Pops is in town to broadcast a game for the Rangers, former Ranger player and GM, now the broadcaster. Flashback to June 16th of 98. Ben, number one pick of the A's. Home run derby back there in Arlington. Dad on hand to watch him hit the home run. And then in his second at bat, Tater's up another one. Not a bad day. So perhaps the D-Rays might consider hiring Tom Grieve as one of their color analysts. Because looky there, he bonked one off Alan Menace in his first at bat second of the season it's 3-1 Texas at that point but more the same that one off Bennis again gives Tampa Bay the lead Devil Rays go on to win it 6-4 powered by a couple of green homers and here a little family photo of the day that he hit a couple of dingers off uh, Gaylord Perry at a father and son game that's nice sure is Indian Tigers top of the seventh Jody Garrett Responding to a good visual, Garrett clears the wall his third of the year. He had three RBIs. So did Tim Laker. The Indians win for the third time in four games. Detroit now 13 and 38, worst in the majors. Astros in St. Louis, Jason Simontachi winless in his last four starts, having allowed 19 earned runs during that span. Brad Osmus, Jim Edmonds, great diving catch. Edmonds looks like he's in pain. Then then Edmonds leading off in the bottom of the second, fouls one off, and this doesn't look good. It's the ribs, the right side, they're bruised. He'll miss Thursday's game, possibly more. Meanwhile, Jonathan Johnson making his first start since 98. Same year, this guy sold the Rangers. He made a good career decision, now he's in the White House. Jonathan Johnson ends up in trouble, though, in the fifth, Miguel Cairo. Some contact, Simon Tachi would score on that. The cards would go on to a three to one victory. Simon Tachi getting his first career complete game in his 34th Major League start. What about the Astros? They have lost four of their last five games. Check out the beer makers and Padres baseball the way it used to be for these two. Cecil Cooper there, part of Harvey's wall bangers in the gang. Hitting the home run, Bernie Burr getting into the big old mug, that was nice. Then a vintage top 10 nominee, Ozzie Smith. That got him in the Hall of Fame right there alone as a Padre, the one-hander off a bad infield hop. And then, of course, Raleigh Fingers closing for both these teams. In this case, as a Brewer striking out Lou Whitaker. Oh, but we go back to reality, and let me just tell you, Luis Vizcaino ain't got no handlebar mustache for the Brewers. Gary Bennett in a 6-6 game sends everybody home. A go homer, two-run shot. Padres win it 8-6. Where's Ben Ogilvy? It's just too comical not to see again or hear John Miller describe a big leaguer sent in specifically to pinch run, then running around the diamond in such a little league fashion, you half expected to see him leave behind those little hash marks like Billy during his neighborhood travels in the family circus cartoon strip. Oh, yeah. For Ruben Rivera, there was solace in the Giants' win, but he was still at a loss to explain exactly what happened on the play. Well, then let's look at it again. Ninth inning tie game. David DeLucci thinks he'll handle that. Not a pro. Oh, boy. So, well, now it's gone. Rivera's on his way. I guess instead of going to first, he should go to second. But you really got to touch second. And then where he should have been out of third, the ball gets away. He's eventually going to go home. Rivera. In all my career, it's the first time it's happened. No kidding. I know it's going to be on the highlights. It can happen to anybody. I'm not sad, but I am sad that I tried to score and it didn't happen. Everything was so quick, I didn't have time to think. Could it happen to anybody? Giants, Dimebacks, at it again, and circling the bases counterclockwise, manner best they can. Barry Bonds, ball four, and he walks to third. Now he just, just goes down there to first. Next batter, Benito Santiago. Homers to left, his eighth of the season. Just touch them all. Trot slowly. Make sure you get all those bases. Giants up to top third. Same score, Damian Moss facing out. Citron, Jose Cruz Jr. with a top ten play. Nominee, sure enough, makes the diving catch. Well done there. Bottom five, Santiago facing John Patterson again, and he takes the big Texan deep. Second of the game, ninth of the season. He's nine and 325. Got four ribs in this one. Two for four. Giants up 6-2. Well, top seven, same score. Damian Moss facing Jr. Spivey, and again, Spivey grounding. Look at the former driller, Rich Aurelia. Two former drillers on that play. That's phenomenal. 
Mike Berrybonds, two for two in his career with a homer entering the game against Eddie Oropesa. And, well, let's make it three for three in a second round trip. Bonds, homers to center, ankle feeling good. 13th of the season now, three for three. And Oropesa, lock him up. We'll face him again tomorrow. Giants going to win it 10 2. White Sox, Blue Jays, Jerry Manuel's team struggling. Maglio Odonez had a quote in Wednesday's Chicago Tribune saying, We stink. That's it. We stink. Top of the first, first batter, D'Angelo Jimenez for Chicago. Jimenez, contact, loops it, in for a single, but wait a minute, Jimenez, what's he doing? What is Jimenez doing? He's trying to stretch that into a double, and Vernon Wells throws him out. Bad base running high on the stinkometer. Stinkometer. Mm-hmm, Maglio Odonia's at the plate. Galvin Escobar strikes him out. Odonia said they stink, and now he proves it. Frank Catalogato hits a chopper to Jose Valentin. Valentin, what about him? He can't handle it. It was a tough hop. That's a moderate on the stinkometer. Still could use some deodorant. Ordonez up with two on. Take that, stinkometer, says Maglio. How's that aroma? White Sox win 8 0. John Garland pitched eight scoreless innings for the win. The fresh smelling Mariners and Royals. A little businessman special in KC. Jeremy Affelt to Brett Boone and Boone. Hard knock. Not going to make the fouls, so it's not Moy still counts for a home run. His 13th, Mariners up 1-0. Maybe that's all Jamie Moyer would need because he's going to take advantage of his American League best defense. Bottom four against Brent Abernathy. Ground to second. Brett Boone is there. He'd homer, and not only that, he's got a fielding percentage of 995. Just one error over to Carlos Guillen, who will turn the double play. His fielding percentage, 966. It's short. Well done. Ken Harvey, ground to third, Jeff Cirillo. He'll handle that, just three airs this season. 961 the fielding percentage, and over to first, we've got it. Bottom seven, more Michael Tucker. This time, Boone again, and we go over to first. John Oldwood's fielding percentage, 990. Soft hands at first right there. Two batters later, Angel Barroa, right to Moore. I'll take it himself. Records 15 of his 21 outs via the ground ball. Moyer seven innings, two Ks, two earned runs. Mariners win it 5-2. to two.